Gentlemen, a total offense of almost 2,000 yards. The unanimous Pro Bowl selection scored a total of 18 touchdowns this past season for Los Angeles. For the Seattle Seahawks, the combination of quarterback Dave Craig, the wide receiver Steve Largent. Largent, more than 1,000 yards receiving and 12 touchdowns. The Raiders and the Seahawks, they will try to unlock the vault to the championship playoffs. From the Kingdome in Seattle, Washington, it's the AFC Wild Card Game. The Los Angeles Raiders versus the Seattle Seahawks. Brought to you by the new Chrysler Corporation. We don't want to be the biggest, we just want to be the best. By exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. And by the U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy, and we're ready to go. The AFC wild card game. The Los Angeles Raiders won the toss. They'll be receiving number nine, Norm Johnson, kicking off. Surprise, Greg Pruitt, number 34, is back with Clee Montgomery on the return team. And Montgomery will just watch it go through the end zone. So Los Angeles will have the ball at their own 20-yard line, first down, and here's the return of Jim Plunkett. Compared to Jim Plunkett, Indiana Jones has led a sheltered life. And for Jim, his offensive line, Lawrence, Marvin, Dalby, Marsh, and Davis. His receivers outside Barnwell and Branch Key, tight end, Todd Christensen. And joining Jim Plunkett in the backfield will be Marcus Allen and Kenny Key. And of course, on that offensive set, we'll see a lot of Dave Casper as a second tight end. Here we go with the wild card. We open the doors to the ball for the playoffs. And seventy thousand dollars is inside. Casper coming in motion, and here's Marcus Allen. Four yards to the 24-yard line. He's stacked up by Keith Simpson. Second down and six. Now the defense for the Seahawks that the Raiders' offense is going against: Green, Nash, and Bryant. The front three. Active linebackers for the Seahawks. Schultz, Robinson, Butler, and Gaze. And in the secondary, Simpson and Brown on the corners. Harris at one safely. Kenny Easley at the other. Maybe the key man, Bob, to that defense. And also, we will be seeing him as a punt returner. They want to put some more offense back to their special team. Second down and six. Marcus Allen. No game. Maybe a yard. Third and five. Charlie, one of the key matchups we'll be looking at today, all pro against all pro, Todd Christensen with 80 catches, 70 touchdowns, uh, seven touchdowns against Kenny Easley. The other key matchup, big Bruce Davis, number 79, against Jeff Bryant with 14 and a half sacks. We'll be watching them throughout the day. And they spotted it for no gain, so it is third down and six. You look for Plunkett to throw, that means number 46, Todd Christensen, is the first man he'll be looking for. Has pressure, and it is there. It is to Kenny King, the least expected receiver of the offense. Well, Charlie, I think you hit it right on the head and was probably the last receiver that Jim Plunkett was looking for. You saw Plunkett getting up off the ground. That will probably be happening a lot today. He holds the ball a lot longer than most quarterbacks. And the gain of 12 yards, 36-yard line, first down for the Raiders. Ball game just underway in the kingdom. Perfect condition. Marcus Allen. Scramble for the football recovered by the Raiders. Gain of a couple, and Keith Butler, inside right linebacker, was there for the defense. And coming up at the bottom of the sack is Jacob Green. Mickey Marvin recovered it. Charlie, one of the things you're going to be seeing today is the Seattle Seahawks grabbing and clawing and scratching for the football. They lead the league in takeaways. Marcus Allen being hit. The ball comes free. Jacob Green, 79, and a host of Seattle Seahawks had an opportunity. They let that one get by him. Mickey Marvin was the man on the spot for the Raiders. He got the ball. Here's Marcus Allen. Cut off outside and dropped in his track. Outstanding defensive play by Jacob Green. Loss of four. Green. 
Mike Fanning coming inside. Jacob Green makes the play. 33-yard line. Charlie, one factor that is not on the field today, as a lot of people know, is the fans here last week, they retired the jersey number 12, emblematic of the fans and what they mean to this team. They're certainly into the ball game here already today. Third down and 12. Here comes a double safety blitz. Side. He was throwing it away. I don't believe that Malcolm Barnwell saw the football. Jim Plunkett saw the blitz, Charlie. He knew he couldn't block it, but Barnwell did not see it, and he didn't look for the football. Double safety blitz. Plunkett knows right now that he cannot block this blitz. They have one more man coming than he can block. He gets the ball off. Barnwell doesn't see it coming. Fourth down and 12, Ray Guy, appearing in his 22nd postseason game. Kicking to Kenny Easley. Easley trying to put some more offense back into the special team. As he's blocked around the corner, 25, 30, spins his way to the 33-yard line. The Seahawks looking for a spark. Ray Guy, a 50-yard kick. Kenny Easley, a 17-yard return. We'll be back. There's a star in your eyes. No one could ever deny. You're on your way to the top. And along the way, you've always known just who you are. Where you're going, you've always known. Going. It's exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's alone. For 1985, Plymouth engineers a new 550 Reliant K, the Reliant Super K. The best six passenger car value. Backed with 550 protection. Aerodynamically redesigned to be more efficient. We made the best better. 550 Reliant, the Super K. Match it if you can. Plymouth, best built, best backed American cars. 11 minutes and three seconds left to go in the first quarter. AFC wild card game. Seahawks on offense for the first time. First down their own 34 yard line. Greg Gibbs to Dan Joyner. Now let's look at that offense. As Joyner picks up five, the quarterback, of course, is Dave Craig, number 17. 32 touchdown passes. Offensive line, Essex, Bailey, Bush, Pratt, and Kreider. We may see, Essex had the flu. We may see Abramowitz in there. Turner, Young, and Largent are the receivers. Largent, of course, is the key. The running backs, Joyner and Hughes, behind the quarterback, Dave Craig. Second down and five. Seattle at their own 39-yard line. No score. David Hughes, who has been averaging 5.1 yards a carry the last three games, and he picks up eight yards and the first down. Matt Millen makes the tackle. Let's go to the defense of the Raiders. Alzado, Kenlaw, Long, and Howie Long, number 79. He'll be everywhere. Linebackers, Martin, Squire, Millen, Van Pelt. All pros at the corner, Hayes and Hayes. All pro at safety, McElroy and Mike Davis. Seattle, 46 yard line, first down. Jordan, 50 yard line. Gain of four, second down and six. Bob, let's go to the key matchup. One of the key matchups, Charlie, will be Bob Kreider, number 78, against Howie Long. Long with 10 sacks on the year. Really moves around a lot. It'd be a key matchup there. Another matchup, Steve Largent, number 80, against Lester Hayes and also Mike Haynes on the other side. They need some production out of Steve Largent to get some things done in their passing game. Defensive change. Bill Pakel comes in. Offensive change. Mike Dice, two tight ends, and Kid Abramowitz is in for Ron Essex, who has been bothered by this flu. Second down and six. 50 yard line. No score. David Hughes. Hughes, first down. Needed six. He got eight. Lester Hayes with the tackle. 
Charlie, we had a nice conversation yesterday with Chuck Knox, and he was telling us he needs more balance in his offense. The last month, they've thrown 45, average 45 passes a game. That's putting too much pressure on Dave Craig. They want to get back to more balance, and he said we're going to see a lot more running today. As you notice, the first four plays have all been run. Double tight end situation. And we thought, and there's uh, Chuck Knox, and we thought we had a scoop until we talked to the Raider players. They said he's going to run, and we picked up the paper today in Seattle. They said he's going to run. Los Angeles 42-yard line, first down. Eric Lane comes in as the running back and picks up a couple of yards to the 40-yard line, second down and eight. Was there a reason that he has made the statement this week that he is going to stay on the ground? Well, let's take a look at, at Howie Long and Kreider, the matchup we talked about. Kreider doing a good job on this play. But I think your, your point is well taken, Charlie. I think he was trying to take some pressure off of his quarterback, Dave Craig, by saying, listen, we're not going to ask you to throw that many passes. We want to spread the load to the offense and the defense. Second down and eight. No score. David Hughes. 37 yard line, gain of three. So it'll be third down and five, and both ball clubs wound up like top. So we'll see some of that pushing and shoving as everybody is keyed up for the game. Tom Floyd's the head coach for Los Angeles Raiders. Their record 11 and five. Postseason play, his record is eight and one. That's almost 89 percent for Tom in postseason play. Only one coach in the National Football League has a better postseason record. Vince Lombardi, the one coach that's better. That's right. <laughs> we wanted everybody to anticipate and let them join in. Rick going deep, Turner, he's there, under throw, he drops it, oh, five-yard line incomplete, had the coverage, he was behind the coverage, the pass was under throw, but he still had an opportunity to catch it, and he could so it'll be fourth down and five, back at the 36-yard line official. One of the key things is time for him to throw, gun blocking and also pass protection, Harry gets the ball should have been completed if Craig would have thrown it a little bit sooner. There were not three men around Turner when the ball should have been thrown. Because of the delay in the throwing, there was a lot of people there when the ball got there. Fourth down, Jeff West with a 37.5 yard average will be kicking to Clee Montgomery. Going for the corner and hangs it up. Takes the Seahawks bounce and it will be down. Juggle about the one yard line. Six minutes and 42 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. No score in the ball game. We'll be back. If you've got what it takes and really care, there's a special kind of life you'll want to share. Serving your country is a special call. It's good for you, it's good for all. Not all who drive fit the bill. It calls for brains, it calls for skill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. High tech and the services go hand in hand. It's a whole new world. You're in demand in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. You'll move up, you'll feel proud. You'll stand out above the crowd in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. But most of all, you'll earn the respect of the people and country you're there to protect. In the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, it's a great place to start. Introducing a Plymouth, engineered with quality and luxury to challenge Buick Century and Old Sierra, but for over a thousand less. Introducing Caravelle. Match it. Caravelle, with luxury equipment and comfort for a family of six. Caravelle, with the 550 protection plan and the option of turbo power. The 550 Plymouth Caravelle. Match it, if you can. Swimmer, best built, best backed American cars. I'm Tom Brokaw. Why does Israel's occupation of the West Bank mean Jew against Jew? A report on Israel's moral dilemma, Monday on NBC Nightly News. Raiders in office, let's go to their scouting report. One of the things they like to do is run all the receivers deep, Charlie, and then try to get Marcus Allen out here one-on-one -on -one and let him break inside or out. They give him the option. They feel like if they can get him the ball out of the backfield, they can make some big things happen. And for the Seahawks, it was Connie Kawhi who made big things happen. He downed the ball at the Los Angeles four-yard line. 
Raiders now have Frank Hawkins in the backfield along with Marcus Allen. No score in the ballgame. 642. Let's go in the first bucket to throw. Right side pass is complete to Marcus Allen. A little sliding grab at the 10 yard line. He'll pick up six, second down and four. And the outside linebacker on that side, Bruce Schultz, was there to cover it. Just the play we talked about, Charlie. All the receivers going deep. Not a bad call back there. Good coverage deep, so he gave the option to Marcus Allen, hit him on a little out. Now they got a little breathing room. The Seahawks, on their first offensive drive, held the ball. Six minutes and 21 seconds. They ran only seven plays, six on the ground, one through the air, but they used up almost six and a half minutes. Second and four. Hawkins, and he has stopped. This time it was Shelton Robinson, the leading tackler for the Seahawks, who was there to make the play. Now Seattle, they have been known here, look at their top tacklers. They've had a big play defense this year, but the last couple of ball games, that defense has been, uh, they've been on a hiatus. They haven't been participating like they had prior to that. They've had no sacks, and that's kind of unusual for this defense. They need some big plays because their offense is going to be a little bit more conservative today. Third down and three, 11-yard line. Pluck it over the middle, and there he is. Tight end, Todd Christensen. Key first down, 32-yard line. A gain of 21 yards on the play. But Charlie, if there's any rustiness on Jim Plunkett, I don't see it. Here you'll see the tight end, Christensen, just going down and finding the seam between the linebackers, and the timing of the pass was perfect. I don't see any rustiness at all in Jim Plunkett. I think he worked it out in practice this week. And, of course, Todd Christensen, seven touchdown receptors, more than 1,000 yards receiving during the regular season. First down, Raiders, their own 32-yard line. Plunkett, three of four, 39 yards. Little play action. And first back of the ball game. And Keith Butler, who had only one sack in the regular season, got it, a loss of seven. First sack the Seahawks have had in three games. That's right. We talk about him not having a sack, and sooner than we say it, here it comes. Play action pass on first down. Puckett never really has an opportunity to look downfield. Second down and 17, 25-yard line. Four minutes, 17 seconds. That is the time remaining. First quarter, no score between Seattle and Los Angeles. Look at it. This is back to go. Two in a row. Jacob Green. Mike Fanny had a piece of it. Loss of nine. Just tight coverage in the secondary allows 79 Jacob Green to get in there. You got to give that credit for the defensive backs. They were in their six defensive back scheme. Plunkett was undecisive, should have gotten rid of it and avoided the sack. Third down is 26. Marcus Allen sweep right side. Across the 25 to the 26-yard line, he gets 10, but that will make it fourth down and 16, and Ray Guy will be kicking to Kitty Easley. Ray Guy's first punt of the ball game, 50 yards, and Easley with a good return of 17. Charlie, you know, we've stated in the past that Seattle has some of the best special teams in the league. Kenny Easley was returning punts up to about two games ago. He is back because they need more offense than that special team unit. Good catch. Easley feels it at the 21-yard line. Guy overkicked his coverage by about 12 yards. And around 10 yards on the return for Kenny Easley. Stacy Duran is the Raider who brought him down. We'll stop the clock. 2.52 left to go. We're in the first quarter. We have no score. A 56-yard punt. Dodge announces the toughest truck warranty in America. 
five years or 50,000 miles, covering transmissions, drive shafts, blocks, heads, flywheels, transfer cases, axles, U-joints, water pumps, all internal engine parts, and outer body rust on every truck we build. Ford and Chevy talk tough. Dodge proves it. Dodge, the best back trucks in America. That's guaranteed. I'd sure like another strobe. No way. Alex? Two cold strobes. <laughs> Where do you see this? Just open the refrigerator. Just open one bottle. Just open the other. Now he's pouring yours. Now he's pouring mine. Alex, you better be drinking your water. <laughs> Stroh's and Strolite fire brew for smoother taste. Bob, the playoffs, of course, always pressure. You've been there many times. What's it like from a player's standpoint? Well, I think, Charlie, in the meetings, the players are more attentive. I think in the practices, they get a lot more done. They run crisper patterns. They're sharper. There are fewer mistakes. And I think that the team really comes together as a, as a unit. Now, see, uh, Seattle has less playoff experience than the Raiders. Is that a factor in a game like this? I think it is for the Raiders. Of course, when, you, when you've been there before and you're frustrated, as the Seahawks were, you get a lot of motivation coming back this year. No score. Seattle has the ball first down on the own 31-yard line. Second time in the ball game that they have moved on offense. And David Hughes gets the call. Now let's go to the scouting report for the Seattle Seahawks. They'll bring him down. Take him to the outside, the other inside receiver the same route. If they are not open, they'll run the wide receivers inside, and Craig will have an opportunity to look deep and then short. Gain of four on the last play to the 35-yard line, second down and six. Here's Dan Dornick. Here in a four, 39-yard line, third down and two, Lyle Alzado with the tackle. So Chuck Knox is staying with that game plan of running the ball. He certainly is. He's come out, ran, going through. You'll see Alzado and Abramowitz, 59, playing for Essink, who is out with the flu. Alzado plays off of him, but you gain three or four yards. Good play for the Seahawks. Seattle with nine offensive plays. They've thrown only one pass. That was incomplete. And now, Daryl Turner... Paul Scancy in the lineup along with Steve Larger, three wide receivers. Ryan Walker's in Seattle going with four wide receivers. Third down and two. Inside handoff to Dornick. And Dornick has a first down. 49-yard line, a gain of 10 yards and a first down. Van McElroy with a tackle for the Los Angeles Raiders. One of the things the Seahawks want to do today is in obvious passing situations, run the football to slow down the rush. And they run, want to run the ball at Howie Long because he gets upfield, good penetration. They feel like if he comes upfield, they can duck inside of him and get good yardage, a good indication right there. And we'll be selecting the Michelob most valuable player for today's game, so you watch along, see how, uh, how you would be voting today. First down for Seattle. Here's David Hughes. And Hughes has three yards to the 47-yard line of Los Angeles. So it will be second down and seven. And the clock just rolling along. 30 seconds and counting. Time remaining in the scoreless first quarter. Of course, I'm sure the Seahawks feel that as long as they have the football, they, it's going to be a low-scoring ball game in their estimation. And they, can, they want to keep the Raider big play offense off of the field. Well, of course, Chuck Knox has always been a ground Chuck type of a guy. He wants to run the ball. He's getting back to that today. And they stay with it. Here's Dornick. Just a yard, though, to the 46-yard line. So it'll be third down and six as time runs out in a scoreless first quarter here at the Kingdom. The AFC Wild Card Game. We'll be back with the second quarter in just a moment between this is charlie jones and bob greasy we start the second quarter afc wild card game no score between the raiders and the seahawks third down and six in seattle now with four wide receivers in the ball game howie long 
going defensively is moves to inside right tackle as part of the four-man rush. Alzado breaks through, pass is incomplete. Alzado with the pressure, fitted receiver with Daryl Turner and Lester Hayes and excellent coverage on him. This was the man who made the play, though, for Los Angeles. Dave Craig had happy feet. He was moving around a little bit in the pocket. Really had enough time to complete this pass. His initial receiver was open. Now he just needs to get the ball out in front a little bit more. Of course, when you see a man as big as Lyle Alzado coming after you, he may have some happy feet. You're happy that you get the ball away. You want to get out of there. Here's Jeff Webb. Jeff kicking to Clee Montgomery. Last time the Seahawks were in this situation, Connie Kawhi down into the four-yard line. He hangs this one up. And it bounces right on the sideline at the 20-yard line. So the Raiders will be taking over on their own 20-yard line. New Year's Day, the granddaddy of them all on NBC, the Ohio State Buckeyes, and the USC Trojans. The name of the game, the Rose Bowl. Marcus Allen picks up the first down. Bruce Schultz again with the tackle. Marks the ball at the 32-yard line. So I'm wondering now if the Raiders are going to say, if you want to play that game, we could play that game. I don't think the Raider offense is going to be intimidated by what the Seahawks offense is doing. They want to establish their offense, which is Marcus Allen and Christensen, and occasionally go deep with their pressure receivers. No score in the ball game. 13-45 left to go first half. Marcus Allen. A couple of yards to the 34-yard line. It'll be second down and eight. Jeff Bryant cut him down. Statistics in the first period. Here they are. No yards passing for the Seahawks. Rushing, as we've talked about, 52 to 13 Seattle time. Time of possession about equal. It's really unusual for the Seahawks to come out and not have any yards passing. You wouldn't say that a year ago, but what they've done this year since the loss of Kurt Warner has been all passing. Second down and eight is Marcus Allen. Two yards to the 36-yard line. Third down and six, and now you look for the Raiders to throw. Joe Nash, the nose tackle, along with linebacker Keith Butler on that last stop, and what a year Joe Nash has had. Preseason, they were looking for a nose tackle, and Joe Nash kept saying, what about me? I'm your nose tackle. Well, and he proved it. And the people that got all the play all year were the two ends, Jeff Bryant and Jacob Green, 14 and a half sacks and 13. He makes the Pro Bowl, Joe Nash. And deservedly so. Third down and six. In fact, 15 of the 41 players in the Pro Bowl in this ball game. Puckett goes deep to Barnwell, and it is incomplete. Terry Taylor and Kenny Easley had the double coverage. It will be fourth down and six. Back at the Los Angeles 36 yard line. You know, we're talking about Joe Nash and, and the fact that he didn't get a lot of the notoriety this year. Number 72 in the middle of your screen on the nose tackle, coming around, number 72, trying to make a game where the two defensive linemen come to the inside, he swings to the outside. That time, good protection for Plunkett. Ray Guy almost has his block. Flag is down. The Raiders will retain possession. The ball touched downfield in a scramble for it. Los Angeles has him at that point. It's going to come back, though, Charlie. It will come back because of the flag. Brad Young, first penalty of the ball game, going for the block. Fred Young, number 50. Right there. Right there, making an effort. You know, this year, Charlie, they've instituted something. One player is voted to the Pro Bowl for special teams. Fred Young has had an outstanding year all year long playing for the Seattle Seahawks. He was voted that player to be on the Pro Bowl team. That time he came up with a, uh, well, it wasn't a, it was a negative play as far as the Seahawks were concerned, but, you know, talking with Chuck Knox a couple of weeks ago when we did a ball game, he says, we rushed the passer a lot, and the first time we roughed him, similar to what they did today, but for the rest of the game, that punter didn't punt very well. So you're looking at him. You know, you know that he's there. Raiders retain possession, 41-yard line. No question about the call. 12-15, time remaining, second quarter. We have no score. Barnwell shows motion. Plunk get a little play action. Deep over the middle, pass is complete. 42-yard line to Barnwell. And Malcolm pulls it down at the Seattle 42-yard line. 
First down as Dave Brown is there to stop it. 15 yards on the play. You're going to see Plunkett dropping back to pass right here. The good protection that you're going to see. Barnwell's going to get open over the middle of the field. A little play action, first down pass. Right there, good shot from our end zone camera above the goalpost. The ball at the Seattle 41 yard line, first down. And Jeff Bryant. Anticipating the count came across. And the 79. But he was brought up under center. So the penalty goes against the Raiders. Move it back to the 46 yard line. It'll be first down and 15. Davis, Marsh, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence at offensive line for the Los Angeles Raiders. He'll lose two yards to the 48-yard line. Second down and 17. First man to get to him was Kenny Easley. Joe Nash was also there. So the Seattle defense playing more as they did in the middle of the season. Because the Seahawks were winning on defense. And the wave is underway, as is Marcus Allen. Bumble and a scramble for the ball. They say, no, Raiders have it. Mike Fanning was going after it. It'll be no gain on the play, third down and 17. So these Seattle players know the state of their team. They know that Kurt Warner has been injured. And they also... Is that Marcus? Marcus Allen, the injured player. Yeah. Go ahead. But they also know that the offense is having some problems. They want to go out there and try to get some turnovers. Grab for the ball, claw for it. Let's see if we if we take a face mask right there, yes. And it was not called. Oh, Ooh, that, is, that, that is uh, a tough, tough. Uh, yeah. I'm just glad that he's not injured because that's the way you can really get a serious neck injury. Third down, 17. Seahawks fans trying to establish the ninth wave. That is the toughest, most unpredictable of all the ways. Here's Greg Troy. Throw it to the 42-yard line. He'll pick up about six. It'll be fourth down and 11 as John Harris makes the tackle. Let's go back to the play preview. Go back one play and take a look at this. Well, Marcus Allen, I can't really see who grabbed him, but it's an ugly looking thing. Mike Fanning see, got it. Mike Fanning, to see someone neck turn that much, I'm just uh, happy that he's able to walk off. It looks like he's all right. Ray Guy will be kicking to Kenny Easley. He goes for the corner. And Easley going for the left corner. Easley was floating to the near side, taking the cover man with him. <laughs> but an excellent kick. It went out at the seven-yard line, a 35-yard kick. When you watched Easley, you were wondering if he was watching the same football. Really a smart play by Easley. We'll be back. Some things look hard, but once you know the secret, they're easy. It's easy. Some people think financing a new car is hard, but it isn't. It's easy. It's as easy as GMAC. With GMAC, buying or leasing a new GM car or truck is easy. Ask your GM dealer and see how easy it is. Financing a new car may seem hard, but once you know the secret... It's as easy as GMAC. It's easy. 
It's Chevrolet's New Year kickoff. Chevy dealers are kicking off the new year with their biggest and longest celebration ever. They're out to sell 175,000 cars and trucks by January 21st. Take delivery from a wide selection of Chevrolet's most popular cars and trucks by January 21st and make no monthly payments till spring with GMAC financing. And what's more, save up to $740 on specially equipped full-size pickups, up to $330 on celebrity sedans and wagons. Big savings. Deferred payments at your Chevy dealers. Today's game is brought to you by Today's Chevrolet. See today's Chevy. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. By Stroh's and Stroh Light. Fire brewed for smoother taste. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy. Nine minutes, 24 seconds. Time remaining. First half, no score between the Los Angeles Raiders, Seattle Seahawks, in the AFC wild card game, Seattle with the ball at their own seven yard line for down. And as they have been doing throughout this game, just staying on the ground, Dan Dornick gets the call, and he'll pick up about two, maybe three markets for two yards to the nine. Second down and eight, and Greg Townsend is there to greet him for Los Angeles. Yeah, I think one and trying to run the ball more and not throw it so much. In the two previous games this year, in, in L.A. when the Seattle Seahawks lost 28 to 14, they, they threw 12 passes, completed five for 74 yards. In the game they won in Seattle, they only threw 25 times. So they don't want to throw as much for that pressure defense for the Raiders. As far as passing is concerned, here comes the third pass of the ball. You Craig with all the time in the world. Out of the backfield is David Hughes. And Hughes has the first down at the 18-yard line. He picks up nine yards on the play. And Craig now one of three throwers. Look at number 93, Townsend, who has eight sacks on the season, giving a little pressure on the quarterback, trying to jump and get his hands on the football. You know, that's just as, as we'll take a look at at what uh, the quarterback is seeing, but that sometimes the penetration and then getting your hands up can bother a quarterback as much as the penetration into the pocket. First down, Seattle, their own 18 yard line. No score in the ball game, just over eight and a half minutes left in the second quarter is Dornick. And Dornick has a yard, they'll mark it for two to the 20 yard line, so it'll be second down and eight. And Bill Fakel out of Rutgers with 12 and a half sacks during the regular season was the man who brought him down, number 71. I think the Seahawks staying with their running attack. Well, Dornick is and Dornick limping comes out limping. And Eric Lane field. replaces it. But I, I, it's part of their plan, but I feel that part of their plan is to use up the clock. Well, I think that's the case, Charlie. They want to use up some time and let their defense create something. Second and eight. And here's Eric Lake. Aimed to capture the special team. Picked up the first down. Needed eight and he got it to the 28-yard line. Bill Pakel with the stop. Officials take the measurement. Now they're going to ask for the change to come out. Jim Plunkett, are you surprised that he's starting in the ballgame? No, I'm not, Charlie. I think it's a good move on the part of Tom Flores. You we'll see the first down for the Seahawks. I think it's a good move. Tom Flores, the next quarterback himself. He's been through it before with Plunkett. Plunkett having won two championships in the last four years. And Plunkett, Tom Flores says, well, if I'm going to be in a big game, I want my main man going for me. And there's Tom Flores, head coach, Los Angeles Raiders. Oh, what a job he has done. First down, Seattle, on their own 28-yard line. Very conservative. Eric Lane, 31-yard line. It'll be three, second down and seven. Rod Martin makes the tackle. He'll mark it for four to the 32. We haven't seen Steen Largent much because there's not many passes in the game, but he's going to come back and try to get a block right there. He sees Mike Davis already gone, so he doesn't clip him, turns back out to the outside. Steve 
Sargent is a fine, fine receiver and a good asset to a ball club. He'll do what's necessary, and that means that means blocking. He'll do it. The Seahawks. This is their 19th play of the game. 15 on the ground, three in the air, and another. Here's David Mueller. Here's to the 40. Here's to the 44 yard line. First down. Gain of 12 yards on the play. Well, Charlie, both teams are coming off of a very poor performances last week. And I think what the Seahawks saw in that Steeler game when the Steelers beat the Raiders was the Steelers really taking it to him at the line of scrimmage, creating some holes up there and running the football. And I think with the Seattle situation, they say, we're going to try and run the ball some more. I think they both came off of poor performances because Denver and Pittsburgh played so well in those ball games. Here's Craig to throw. He goes deep, double coverage, over throws. Should have been intercepted. Two flags are dropped. Van McElroy had a chance for the interception, but there were two flags on the play. Intercepted, number 37, defense, first stop. Called on Lester Hayes. You're going to see Largent right out here with Lester. He's going to come down, break to the inside and back out, and it's going to be tripping on Lester Hayes. Man coverage, get mixed up at the line of scrimmage, and then he starts going back to the outside. You saw the double coverage coming over. The penalty worth about 23 yards. Here's the tripping. Right there. Good call by the official right there on the play. At the Los Angeles 33-yard line, first down. And going back in the ball game. That is the decibel count, the sound level here in the dome. 104, 106. Now, to give you an idea, that is more than a subway train, but less than a rock band at this point. <laughs> First down, gain of 10 from the 33 to the 23-yard line. Eighth play of the drive. Hughes spinning, he'll lose yardage. Good defensive play. Rod Martin makes it for the Raiders. Loss of three yards to the 26, second down and 13. Still no score. Four minutes and 50 seconds left to go in the first half. And with Seattle staying on the ground, and in reality, the Raiders haven't thrown the ball that much, that the game is moving along at a very brisk pace. I think you have to look at both defenses, Charlie. The Raiders number three in the league, Seattle number six with all those turnovers, it's figured to be kind of a low-scoring conservative game. Tight end, Charlie Young coming in motion, Craig back. This pressure goes deep inside. Dave Craig to Daryl Turner, the rookie from Michigan State. drive in nine plays it took more than five minutes and now Norm Johnson to attempt the point after it's good the Seattle Seahawks out in front of the Los Angeles Raiders by a score of seven and other I think if you could draw up a carbon copy drive of what Chuck Knox wants to get done today. It's a bunch of runs and then some long passes. Here you'll see the protection good for Craig. Double coverage down the middle, but he throws the ball to the inside of the field and only Daryl Turner can make the catch. Both wide receivers, double coverage. Good throw. And there he is, the smile of Daryl Turner. We'll be back for the kickoff. It's just an over. 
coverage. Mike Davis is going to split the other safety splits. Turner's going to come from this side right down the middle of the field. The two safety split to go double the wide receivers. An excellent throw to Turner. Good read by David Craig. During that drive with the Seahawks, they did not have a third down in that drive. Norm Johnson kicking off either Greg Good or Clee Montgomery. five-yard line to the 10. Slips two tackles and returns to the 17-yard line. 12 yards on the return by Greg Pruitt. I'm surprised that he's back on the kickoff return team as Doki Williams has been back there with Cleveland Montgomery. But today, it is Greg Pruitt going with experience as a 12-year veteran. In the Associated Press voting for Offensive Rookie of the Year, Lewis Lips of Pittsburgh was one. Greg Bell of Buffalo was two, and Daryl Turner, who just scored the touchdown, was third in the voting. 7-0, Seattle leading the Raiders. Los Angeles has the ball at their own 18-yard line. Marcus Allen back in the ball game. He'll pick up a yard to the 19, and it will be second down and nine. Jim Plunkett has completed four of six passes for 57 yards. Keith Butler makes the stop for the Seattle Seahawks. And now Los Angeles needs to see if they can get some of that silver and black magic to work. They didn't have any going for them last week, and they need to generate some this week. Second and nine, 19-yard line. Here's Marcus out. One more yard to the 20. It'll be third down and eight. You can see Mar Marcus Allen right here. He's just going to go to the right side on a little give. Not much there. Good defense by the Seattle Seahawks. Third down conversions. The Raiders two of six. Marcus Allen, 24 yards at 12 carries. Defense is held to a two-yard average. Plug in the throw. It's pressure to go back. Third shot for the ball game. Jacob Green got it. Green now with one and a half of the three sides. One of the things the Raiders ask their quarterbacks to do is hold the ball a little longer. Deep pass patterns all the way. You see at the top of your screen, Christensen, the tight end, was going deep. Good coverage allowed the sack to get there. Defensive coordinator Tom Catlin the Seattle Seahawks has done a great job with that, that Seahawks defense. Two-time All-America at the University of Oklahoma. And he has been coaching in the NFL for 25 years. Great guy, kicking to Kenny Easley. Another good one. Easley floats under it, takes it at the 40-yard line. And returns to the Los Angeles 46-yard line. 14 yards on the return. Jack Squire makes the tackle. We've got a timeout, and the Seahawks have the lead. 7 to nothing. 2-19 left to go, first half. AT&T is in travel. How? By helping NASA exchange 56,000 bits of information in an instant. Just as we can help NASA send man beyond the Earth, we can help a travel agent send a man across the Earth. AT&T can help get instant information about hotels, rates, flights. We can tailor a long-distance data network big enough for NASA and one just right for you. The people of AT&T Communications. We're thinking about your business in ways you never thought of. At first glance, all airlines may appear to be the same, but one gives you a special way to fly. An airline so large it carries over 30 million people a year, yet so personalized you can reserve your seat a year in advance. We have the seat you want, Mr. Martin. In a world of airlines, one airline, American Airlines, can make your trip something special. Welcome aboard. Something special in the air. 
now there's been a lot of talk about the crowd noise in the kingdom and about the crowd i think they were the crowd was was up more for last week's ball game they're not ready about this ball game yet mentally they may be a little worn out but i think last week's game they really didn't get to do all their business yeah. because denver really took them out of the ball yeah. game by scoring early in the first half and then the big turnover to start the second half they went in to score really took this crowd out so i think they've got some stored up juices to really let flow here today Seattle with the ball the Los Angeles 46 yard line. This is the Seahawks best field position to start a drop and they'll start it on the ground of course. Dan Dornick who came out limping earlier in the ball game. He's back in. Let's take another look at that line. Howie Long 75 playing over the nose just throws Bush out of the way <laughs> and and we told a little earlier we would be watching Howie Long and that he would be moving around to take advantage. That time he certainly did some damage on the nose. And we come now to the two minute warning. We've got a timeout and the score is Seattle seven and Los Angeles nothing. This is the definitive book on champagne. While writing it, noted author William Kaufman evaluated the finest champagnes in the world. Here's an extraordinary find, a California champagne that is both truly dry and delightfully drinkable, new Andre Brut. No other American champagne can compare. New Andre Brut. No other American champagne can compare. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class for 1985. So masterfully engineered that it can perform with the world's finest sports sedans. And that makes it exciting. Yet so conscientiously engineered that its feeling of sheer driving security is unique. And that makes it a Mercedes-Benz. The 190 class. Mercedes-Benz. Engineered like no other car in the world. The NFL plays here. The winner of today's game faces Miami in the AFC Divisional Playoff. A championship spot is on the line. Your team plays here on NBC. Special halftime. Bob and my Bill and Ash will have a feature of Dave Craig at Milton College, where he played his football. They don't play football there anymore. And saw the, the college isn't there anymore. Oh, when they closed uh, Lyle Alzado's College, Yanktown. <laughs> <laughs> that may be because of Lyle. Well, that's not true. That's not true. <laughs> Second down and set. Here's Dan Dornick. A couple of yards to the 40-yard line, so it'll be third down and four. Matt Millen with the tackle. Also, at halftime, want to stay for this one. Ron Cherry, Dan Fouts, and they'll be talking with Ahmad Rashad. Seattle, so far, 24 offensive plays. Only four passes. 20 rushes and four passes. Third down and four. Minute 23 and counting. Time remaining in the first half. Seattle leading 7 nothing. Very conservative first half. Byron Walker in motion. And we have a timeout. Call for the Seattle Seahawks. They now have two remaining in the first half. Los Angeles has three. We'll be back to the kingdom in just a moment. Excuse me. I turned off your set so I could tell you about a television from General Electric. Your set has one speaker. GE has two sophisticated speakers that are going to knock your socks off. Your set has a regular tube. GE has the blue NeoVision tube that selectively filters out room light. Now, I'll show you this remarkable TV, but remember, it's going to be on your set. Clauses, everybody. Have a chicken McNugget. I don't worry. It's under 63 calories. Oh, Rudy, be a dear and open another 20 pack. McDonald's Chicken McNuggets 20 pack makes every holiday party happy and fun. Aren't we having fun? Mingle, mingle. Tiny Tim, tiny as ever. Take two. It's a good time. What oh, oh, oh. a great taste. Of McDonald's. Time for McDonald's gift certificates. 50 cents each. Order book of 10 for $5. And they come from all over the great Northwest. And uh, all parts of the great state of Washington. 
117. Time remaining first half. Seahawks lead at 7 0. They're down and four at the Raiders 40 yard line. Seattle with four wide receivers. Craig to throw. Alzado gets it. Alzado had to climb over a blocker and then stretch out, and he, he barely got it. Uh, Lyle Alzado playing against Abramowitz, who is filling in for Essing, gets around him and gets in, crawls, scratches, does whatever it takes. David Craig looks around and says, who is it that's after me? And that is the first sack of the ball game for the Raiders. In the two previous meetings, they each had, uh, the Raiders had six sacks in each of the two previous ball games, and the Raiders 64 on the year. That is third in the NFL. The Raiders take a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. Dave Craig was a long shot in the NFL. They sent me out to throw for you guys. A free agent, a walk-on. He fulfilled a lifelong dream when he led the Seattle Seahawks to their first playoffs. My story was a long shot in professional football, but I'm here to tell you another story, a long shot in life. His name is John Lamotta Jr., a three-letter man in football, track, and wrestling. What happened to John is something that could have happened to any one of us. An automobile accident left him a quadriplegic. Doctors thought he wouldn't make it at first. Then his prognosis was of a life bound to a wheelchair. But John never stopped trying. And the United Way volunteers like Dave Craig at this United Way agency never stopped trying either. And now I'd like you to meet John. How you doing, John? Great. And thanks to you, Gord Colliver, John Dubois. This message furnished by the National Football League. In the seven previous drives for the Seahawks, they punted six times in the other drives they scored the touchdown. And Jeff West will be kicking. Lee Montgomery is set for the return. One minute and two seconds left to go in a very fast-moving first half. he gets it off. Montgomery with a fair catch takes it at the 16 yard line. I was surprised that he had the fair catch. Well they had a they had 10 minutes of line of scrimmage Charlie on an all-out block. He knew he didn't have anything but he blocked back blocking for him so he just took the fair catch. That punt worth 35 yards today's telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience and he rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Seattle Seahawks and the National Football League is prohibited. The Raiders and the Seahawks each with two timeouts left. Los Angeles at their own 16-yard line. And here's Frank Hawkins. And Hawkins to the 26-yard line. Depending on where they spot the ball, it's right at the first down marker. He Simpson making the tackle. And the Raiders take a timeout to stop the clock, so this gives us a moment to remind you to join us tomorrow as NBC Sports rocks with Sports World music videos. It's a sports year in review set to the songs of today's top group, MCB's BJ. Martha Quinn and Bill McAtee will team up as your host. It's new, it's different, and you don't want to miss a single beat. Your kids and my kids will enjoy it. <laughs> my, my I don't even there. know the, the music, to tell you the truth. And also tomorrow, Sports World wraps up 1984, a special year in boxing review. Sports World selects its contenders for knockout of the year and fight of the year honors. We'll celebrate the holidays also in the, Ita in the Italian Alps. The top international bobsledders compete in the World Cup Bobsled Championship from Trevina, Italy. That's all tomorrow. America loves its sports, NBC style, and they'll like the music videos, too. What the uh, L.A. Raiders want to do here, Charlie, they want to obviously move the ball down the field, but they ha they're taking a, a careful posture. They don't want to turn the ball over. They want to try and get some yardage, get downfield, maybe get a field goal out of this, but also at the same time, they know they're going against a team that can take the ball away from them, and that's the thing they want to avoid. 
Barnwell comes wide to the near side, and Christensen is the slot back. And the give is to Hawkins. And Hawkins goes out of bounds. He'll stop the clock. Picks up the first down at the 35-yard line. It was second down and one. So he picks up 10 yards on the play, and Dave Brown was there to chase him out. 44 seconds left to go in the second quarter. Seattle with the lead, 7 to nothing. Only touchdown of the ball game, a 26-yard pass from Dave Craig to Daryl Turner. That capped off a 93-yard drive in nine plays. Jim Pluckett, the of the Raiders. And he is fourth sack of the ball game for the Seahawks. And Jacob Green now is two and a half of the four. So earlier, Charlie, we talked about the pressure defense of the Raiders. You're going to see it Seattle style right here. Tight man-to-man -man coverage. No place for Plunkett to throw the ball. He didn't want to give it up. Took the sack. And Jacob Green lost his father recently. Dedicated this ball game in his honor. Here's Marcus Allen. Allen breaks it near the 45-yard line. Marcus Allen, he does for a football what Dolly Parton does for a sweater. He makes you sit up and take notes. <laughs> well, I don't know about that, Charlie. <laughs> but anytime you have a Marcus Allen in your backfield, you certainly have an opportunity to make a big play. Running to his right, he sees the hole, he cuts back, and then he's going to make a nice little move to his left. You see the safety slipping down. But anytime you have him on the field and give him the ball, he can score. Raiders use up their last timeout now with 14 seconds left to go in the first half. It'll be third down and one at their own 44-yard line. Marcus Allen, 13 carries, 39 yards thus far. Jim Plunkett talks it over on the sideline. The conversation here, Charlie, is not about the third and one. They have 14 seconds on the clock. They want to throw the ball down around the 30-yard line if they can and possibly get some kind of a field goal position where they can go in at least with three points on the board. You know, one thing I like about Jim Plunkett, there's an old saying in sports that, that good players make themselves better and great players make their teammates better. And I think that is an element that Jim Plunkett brings to a football team. I think whenever he walks in that huddle, they know that he has led them to championships before, and he is fresh. He is leg, His legs are fresh, his arm is fresh, and he has no scars. He can come in and just be a hero if he can win some ball games. Third down and one. 14 seconds. Left to go, second quarter. And Christian had his five sacks for the Seahawks. They had 55 on the year. They did not have a sack their last two regular season games. This one goes to Mike Fanning. We talked about earlier, one of the key matchups would be with Bruce Davis and Jeff Bryant. Fanning was in there also, but Bryant had a big... A lot to do with that sack right there. Now, with the play going back to the 34-yard line, take a look. Another angle. The bottom of your screen is 77 Bryant. 74 is Fanning. They both get there about the same time. He just doesn't have time to throw, Charlie. Looking downfield, tight coverage. No receivers were open. Fourth down. 11 or 12 yards to go for the first down. The ball on the 34-yard line. So Seattle has taken a timeout. They want Ray Guy to kick for six seconds to see if Kenny Easley can either have the excellent return for a score or possibly get it close enough very quickly to get out of bounds or they'll take a timeout to stop the clock have a long field goal again. You know, when Kurt Warner was hurt early on in the year, Charlie, they ran a lot. Now they're throwing the ball a lot. Chuck Knox said last week after they lost two in a row, we're going to find a new way to win. Well, I think they're doing it today with more running and more Kenny Easley on the returns. Pressure's on. Oh, great kick. Easy to just let <laughs> this one go. That one hits at the 16-yard line. Kenny says, there's no way. Not from the 16. The other thing that Seattle may have been doing, a 50-yard kick by Ray Guy. Going for the block, and if they got the block, they would do something. Or if they got a weak kick, then Kenny would go for yeah. the return. 
Good point, and Easley is a, is a main man back there. I was very impressed with his intelligence back there. Whether to handle the ball or not, he let that one go. To not want to make a mistake as the Seattle Seahawks have the lead at halftime over the Los Angeles Raiders by a score of 7-0 in the AFC Wild Card game. What do a zipper company in Pennsylvania, a gear manufacturer in Michigan, and a nationwide shoe corporation have in common? They, like thousands of other businesses, have chosen IBM business computer systems to control distribution, speed order processing, and turn out products smoothly. Whatever business you're in, whether you're in zippers, the gear business, or you run a shoe company, an IBM business computer system can help. Did you ever notice that just when you think you see the whole picture, the picture changes? Technology from a company called TRW lets us look at our world in fresh ways. Because there's more to everything than meets the eye. Tomorrow is taking shape at a company called TRW. Last year, Mercedes-Benz introduced the new 190 class to America. Each one has rewarded its driver with a new kind of performance. Each one an almost uncanny balance of power and handling and riding comfort. Each one a remarkable automobile, even by the standards of Mercedes-Benz. The Mercedes-Benz 190 class for 1985, engineered like no other car in the world. The best and the brightest of the bowls are on NBC as the Orange Bowl lights up the night sky. Second ranked Oklahoma battles number three Washington in a game that could decide the national championship. Plus the beauty and pageantry of the famed Orange Bowl halftime. On New Year's Day, America loves its sports, NBC style. Okay, Bob Costas at our NFL 84 studios in New York. 7-0 Seattle at halftime, and along the way, they record five sacks of Raider quarterback Jim Plunkett. Let's take a look at the game's only scoring play thus far. It caps a 93-yard drive, a big chunk of that, on a pass interference call against Lester Hayes. David Craig into the end zone, 27 yards to Darrell Turner. For the rookie, his 36th catch of the season, and 11 of them have gone for touchdowns. Almost one out of every three receptions. Good for a score for Darrell Turner. Now, Bill McAtee, uh, we had hoped on the pregame show to see your feature about Dave Craig quickly regrouping. We've decided to run it here at halftime. Last year in the AFC, <laughs> last year on the AFC title game, uh, David Craig had a tough time with the Raiders. Yes, he did. Uh, you know, they're saying in Seattle that the Seahawks have played this year simply with the cards they've been dealt and won. Much the same can be said about David Craig. He has been successful in spite of the feeling that he is not blessed with a whole lot of natural ability. In week 14, Dave Craig threw five touchdown passes against the Lions. And in this year's first meeting with Denver, Craig ripped the Broncos secondary for 406 yards and three more touchdowns. He's the type of guy that you would not uh, show films of his quarterbacking techniques to high school quarterbacks to say this is how you want to get it done. Uh, because he doesn't set up just perfectly. It's, it's not prototype. In fact, quietly, Dave Craig has thrown 32 touchdown passes. Only six times in the history of the NFL has a quarterback had a better year. One of those this season by Dan Marino. But Craig is the first to admit by comparison he lacks the strong arm of a Marino or Elway and the savvy and experience of a Dan Fouts. But Craig has managed to avoid the problems those comparisons could bring. They don't do anything extraordinarily well, you know, as far as throwing the football. I don't, I don't throw the football with a quick release or as well probably as a Dan Marino or anything like that, who I think is just a fantastic quarterback. Uh, I probably don't scramble or run as good as a John Elway. Uh, maybe I'm not even quite team leader like a Jim Plunkett or anything like that. But I think I do a little bit of what each one of those guys does. He doesn't have uh, the, the arm that some of the great ones have had, but he has great presence on the field. He has the ability to make the play. And uh, that really is, is, is the key. He also has the ability to scramble around and improvise, which all of the uh, great quarterbacks have had. 
ability to make something out of nothing. Like his counterpart today, Jim Plunkett, Dave Craig is quite simply a survivor. He played at Little Milton College in Wisconsin, but ran a pro offense. Afterward, his coach, Rudy Gaddini, got him a tryout with the Seahawks. Number eight made it, but Milton didn't. The school shut down in 1982. Every Saturday, you know, before a game or something like that, they all look and see, you know, who's playing on TV, or they talk the next day about who won, <laughs> and I can't really even get into it. And then whenever I do get into it, they say, well, where's your college, and what do you do? So there's uh, not a whole bunch I can say about that. A year ago, in the AFC Championship, Craig suddenly found himself with limited time as a starter and only small college experience facing the Raiders in the biggest game of his life. The Raiders pressured Craig all afternoon, and the result was not pretty. Anybody would be shell-shocked after experiencing the kind of pressure and heat that the Raiders put on him in that game. And, uh, you know, I, I don't blame him one bit. Those guys were really hammering on him, and... and uh, you know, it just showed. Three for nine, three interceptions. I remember everything. You know, there wasn't there wasn't that much to remember, and uh, so it just felt it just was crushing. I know that we wanted to play. I wanted to play well and do everything as, as well as I could. But uh, maybe sometimes you put too much pressure on yourself and you just didn't relax and, and, and play it the way that, that you got there. In the championship game last year against the Raiders, I think that again was part of the learning process that a developmental quarterback that has to go through. You know, to play in a big game uh, against a team that ended up being the, the world champions, a great defensive football team, and uh, he was severely tested. Will you ever be a great quarterback? I don't know if I'll ever become a great quarterback, but I'd sure like to play on great teams. I think that would be the, the final judgment. Good answer from David Craig. He had been in a little bit of a slump at the end of the regular season as the Seahawks dropped their last two games to Kansas City and to Denver. Craig was intercepted seven times. Perhaps mindful of that, Chuck Knox's game plan has emphasized the running game today. Craig has thrown the ball only four times, completing two, no interceptions, and the one touchdown pass to Darrell Turner. Pete Axelm, surprising because this is a team in the absence of Kurt Warner that did not have a single runner who gained more than 327 yards this year. But the running game has been a big part of Chuck Knox's plan in the first half. And we know how Knox must love it, Bob. Uh, Chuck has always, uh, his first preference would always be to grind out games and, and win 7 nothing or 10-3 or that, that type of game. So, it, you know, the first two meetings this year, I felt even though the team split the games, the Raider defensive line clearly dominated the line of scrimmage. That's not happening today. I mentioned on the pregame show the dreaded blast and all that was going to be taken by Long and Alzado, a, a substance not even approved for use by apes. And the entire nation is buzzing about that <laughs> revelation, by the way. Well, perhaps it just took a while to kick in because Lyle finally got his first sack on the last Seattle play offensive play of the half. This is the only program, by the way, <laughs> approved by the Food and Drug Administration. <laughs> Let's turn out to Ahmad Rashad, who was at the Kingdom with Dan Fouts of the San Diego Chargers and Duran Cherry of the Kansas City Chiefs. Their impressions of the first half. Ahmad? Happy holidays to you, Bob. Out here in Seattle, both teams have been playing it pretty close to the vest. I've got my two experts here with me, and one of the surprising things is Seattle, which hasn't had a running game all year. They've been talking about it all day. They come up with a running game. How can uh, how can they uh, change to get it together? Well, I think it's surprising the Ravens because of the fact that Seattle's thrown the ball 42 times in the past two weeks. Today, they've come out and successfully run the ball, and it's posing a, a lot of problems for their defense. The Raiders would like for them to pass the ball because that works into their strengths, doesn't it, John? Sure, that's the strength of the Raiders game. They can put pressure on Craig and hopefully force some turnovers. So the second half looks like it's going to be a very interesting one. All right, you talk about passing. I've got one of the best passes in the National Football League with me, Dan Fouts. Dan, what about Jim Plunkett? Looks like they're, they're putting a lot of pressure on Plunkett right away. Well, you know, we, we think about going into this game. Is Jim Plunkett going to be rusty? Well, Ahmad, he got all the rust knocked out of him and off of him in that first half. He got tremendous pressure from the Seattle defensive line, and that's really the key to any stopping any pass offense is stopping that quarterback with a good rush. What about Marcus Allen? They seem to be handling him pretty well. Well, they are controlling the line of scrimmage with their down linemen, and they are very active in their secondary with their linebackers and their defensive backs, and they're really being more physical than the Raiders, which is a switch because the Raiders are usually one of the more physical teams in the league. Duran, playing against these two teams, I mean, playing against these two teams twice every year, talking about Seattle, is this a typical Seattle game for him? This is a typical Chuck Knox game. He likes to control the football, and he likes to allow his defense to put pressure and control the game with defense and special teams. So the second half should be one that uh, the Raiders are going to have a tough time fighting against them to get back in this game. All right, both these teams are in the locker room now, and one of the things
things that they're talking about is that one team only has 30 minutes left to play in this season. Which team that'll be, we'll find out when they come back. Back to you, Bobby. Bartomod, thanks very much. I've been asked to remind you folks that tomorrow at 1 Eastern time, it's Sports World's music videos, the sports year in review set to this year's top tunes with MTV's VJ Martha Quinn and remarkably enough, our own <laughs> Phil McAtee. There he is, ladies and gentlemen, a personal friend of Archie Bell and the Drell, so uniquely qualified to handle this particular assignment, Sports World's music video tomorrow on NBC. The second half with Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy right after this from your local station. The music that moved the world's heart to song. The joy and warmth of the sound of music. Starring Julie Andrews in her most captivating role. The beauty. The romance. The triumph. Winner of five Academy Awards. The Sound of Music. A holiday treat for the whole family. Sunday. This is the time of year. When we gather from far and near. And we welcome the season in. And let all the love begin. And the joke you tell, and the song you sing, and the sight of your smile still means everything. And I finally get to say, I think of you every day. I'm on my Happy holidays, Coors to you. From the people at Coors. If you have money invested in a passbook savings account at a bank, do you know how much your money is earning? Five and a quarter percent. And if your money is invested in a savings and loan passbook, it's not earning much more, just five and a half percent. Why not go for the gold? With the Jefferson Building and Savings Golden Passbook, your money earns 10% interest. Just a $500 minimum deposit can make you a winner, and your funds are guaranteed by the Ohio Deposit Guarantee Fund. Jefferson Building and Savings Golden Passbook. It's 1985 Subaru time. This is Charlie Jones and Bob Greasy back at the Kingdom. Let's go back now to the 93-yard touchdown drive by the Seattle Seahawks. There was a key penalty right in the middle of it. Well, I think the, the play you're referring to, Charlie, is when Largent was trying to get downfield, got a good release from the line of scrimmage, and Hayes trips him up inadvertently, but yet he did trip him right here. I think you're going to see it. Trips him up. This play gave him a first down. The following play, they went and did some damage. And Chuck Knox's quote, there are five great plays in the game, and we have to make four of them to make sure we win. And so this became a great play because of, as you said, what followed the 26-yard touchdown pass from Craig to Turner. They were double covering both wide receivers. Not unexpected. They were doubling both sides. You'll see four defensive backs and two receivers. Just a great throw and very good effort by Turner to get open. And something interesting happened. We alluded to it. When we talked with Chuck Knox, yes Chuck Knox yesterday, he said that he was going to run the football a lot more. We wondered if that was really true because we found out that the Raiders knew that he was going to run. And also we found out that it was when we picked up the paper this morning. So there was no big secret. And we were thinking, was he going to take it one step further? Yeah. Well, he said after the last two weeks, when they haven't played very well, they have to find a new way to win. I think their new way is going back to their running game, even without Kurt Warner, throwing very little and getting Kenny Usley back on the return. So let's see if the Raiders can come from behind. We'll be right back after these messages and a word from your local station. Well, moms and dads the world around give their kids the same old sound. Got to go to school, be a big success. They wouldn't settle for anything less. Now they've learned whatever you seek, you'll help yourself to reach your peak in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Need a trade? Looking for a skill. They have hundreds to fit the bill in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Want more school? Don't have the bread. They'll help pay to get you ahead. Talking Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Mom and dad, they'll want to shout. He's made it big. There's no doubt. Thanks, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a great place to start. November 1983, Tandy presents the Model 2000, superior in technology. October 1984, Tandy presents the Model 1200, superior in value. And now, Tandy presents the Model 1000, superior in price performance. Three exciting MS-DOS computers brought to you by Tandy. Clearly superior in technology, support, and service. Available at Radio Shack Computer Centers, the computer expert. Spirit.
spirit of Christmas on Kodakolor VR films. Kodak's sharpest, most dazzling color print films ever. shook the world, and a revolution forever altered human history. A.D., the television event of 1985. My Ralph does the craziest things to pick his Ohio Lotto numbers. <laughs> but now there's a faster, easier way to play Ohio Lotto. It's Auto Lotto. Just mark the Auto Lotto box on your best slip or ask your sales agent for Auto Lotto and let the Lotto computer pick your six numbers at random. Simple. Now, Ralph, wouldn't it be easier to choose Auto Lotto? Once in a while. Now when you play Lotto, you can pick your own numbers or let Auto Lotto pick them for you. It's 1985 Subaru time. As you look at the statistics of the first half, what jumps out at you, only 10 passes were thrown in the first half. Now, Pluckett completed four of six for 57 yards, but his five sacks, of course, five times that he was sacked will bring that stat down. Craig, two of four, 36 yards. He was sacked one time. I think on, the, on, on behalf of the Seahawks, they're doing what they have to do. As far as the Raiders are concerned, they are so concerned about turning the ball over. They're not getting too fancy, but they got to loosen it up a little bit more. They've got to get the ball to Marcus Allen out of the backfield and get the ball to Christensen some. So to start this second half, Chris Barr will be kicking off for the Los Angeles Raiders. On the left, number 46 is David Hughes. On the right, number 30, 32, Cullen Bryant. The kickoff return now. And Hughes circles under, takes it to three, to the 15.